from an undisclosed bunker deep in the earth, bringing you the best in horror, paranormal, and conspiracy. We welcome you to this week's Zombie Fight Club broadcast with your host, Eddie Rotten. What's happening, everybody? This is Eddie Rodden, and uh, we got Red Rum here kicking. What up? Paul Fierro's with hey. us, too. Where's that camera? Where's that other camera? There he hey. is! Hey. All right, so we this is episode, what, four? Are we in episode four now? Episode Zombie four. Life TV. And we are just rolling strong. You know what's weird? It, I don't want to skip who we have on the show. This is William Enstone. And Matt Ripley, they're going to blow y'all's mind here in just a second. We're going to talk about Among the Dead, and, and and hopefully we'll give some secrets and stuff. I don't know. Maybe. Have, okay, maybe. maybe we'll Ooh. maybe break into some secrets. But I want to talk about what, what's going on. I got a little scratchiness in my throat. Yeah, He's talking too. about something <laughs> scratching his throat. It's Texas, chemtrails. Texas is going... <laughs> it is chemtrails. <laughs> Texas is going through the apocalypse. Y'all see some stuff that's going down in Texas lately out there in the world. I mean, the streets are flooded. People it's are crazy. crying. It's Animals crazy. are swimming. Animals are swimming. Did you see like in Bastrop, they're herding cattle across yeah. a street or something? Yep. Man. They're, all, they're all huddled around a house and there's nothing but water around them. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's I know. insane, dude. I'm going to put stilts in my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. Let's get to the show. Thank you guys so much for coming to uh, Zombie Life TV. Uh, I've right, been cool. following Among the Dead for <clears throat> since day one. I've been here for almost four years now. Yeah. And uh, and I have I've had you on several times, William. Do you yeah. like people call you William or Billy? Well, uh, yeah, William. William. Uh, my okay. mom calls me Billy, so everybody else can call me William. When she's, <laughs> when she's totally pissed off, <laughs> Billy. Not all the time. <laughs> yeah, which but, means she's always mad. So, yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. I have I, I've been following Among the Dead since day one since I got here. Um, years and years ago, I think it was you that brought me into yeah. the Fanboy TV studios and introduced me to all the people. That, that we're working with. And, and I didn't amazing. bring you in here, but I, I remember I introduced you to the people who did bring you in here. Yeah, not this room, <laughs> but you remember you and I were in another studio yeah. next door and we're talking to some people yeah. and you told me more about the, the project that you had going on right. and, and it blew my blew my mind because I'm a zombie guy. No. Uh, yeah, I mean... I don't get it. Shut the front <laughs> no door. What can you tell me about Among the Dead and, and what, what parts did y'all play in Among the Dead? What, what role do you play and getting this off the ground. Okay. You go first. I've talked. I've been on the show before. Okay. Uh, I'm Matt Riffley. I am the producer and co-director for Among the Dead. Uh, Among the Dead is our short title for the short film. The actual feature-length film, which we'll go into production for later this year or next spring, will have a different name, but we're not going to disclose it yet until we've got all of our legal stuff covered on it. Okay. Cool. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. How do you feel about being a part of this because you've been a part of it too since day right, one since day right. one i love it i love the project um you know we wish we had funding for it so we could go forward right now but yeah. that's one of those things that we're getting closer to every single day we've got some great talent lined up on it uh, a lot of names that you've known from the 80s all the way up till now and uh, we're actually giving uh some love back to some of our old 80s uh, action stars yeah. and, and horror stars that yeah. everybody grew up with and maybe nice. hasn't seen a whole lot lately. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. So when, when, when you see some of the names, when we finally can announce them, you're like, holy shit. <laughs> it's yeah. like, wow, that guy is, I haven't seen him forever. He is awesome. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking iconic. Right. And, you know. Super <laughs> iconic. And I've, yeah. I've been following your Facebook, been following Twitter. There's all kinds of photos that you have uh, online for people to look at and share. And it's actually pretty hot you know your 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 faces are online and you have other projects yeah. that you're working on too correct but among the dead has dominated what what people seem to be talking about inside uh austin indie films 
Well, we, you know, we've, we've worked really hard on trying to, you know, get a presence out there so mm-hmm. people do know who we are. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the more people talk about it when we get to those points where we're asking for funding and we're looking for people to back us, I've heard of that. Right. You know, one of the cool things <laughs> about doing that is I was wearing an Among the Dead t-shirt once at, uh, so I believe it was Hanover's or Pflugerville. Yeah, I was yeah, at, yeah. Uh, I was actually there. With uh, the female zombie from the shoot, Barbara. Okay. Yeah, she was there. Yeah. And it was like, uh, we were hanging out drinking there, and I was wearing the shirt, and this guy comes up, and he's like, Among the Dead, that's a zombie movie. You're you're in that? And I'm like, yeah, you know, I wrote it. I'm the director. Oh, that's awesome. I heard of that movie. Oh, like, man. So it's like, good. cool, you know? <laughs> hey, you heard of my movie, you know? Yeah. Sweet. That you is know? cool. What was that girl's name that, that was a zombie that day? Uh, Barbara. Barbara. Barbara? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I I didn't know, um, but she is drop dead gorgeous. I did I didn't. But, well, when we got there, I was our you know we sat down to get makeup on you know at your yeah. place and you did all the makeup. Yeah. Incredible Thank you. work, dude. I, you know it, it's really good, but I didn't know that she was so pretty. You know, and, and so not that she wouldn't be. I'm just, I'm just saying. But, but the makeup I, is so good that there was no so way you could good. tell. She's yeah. one of the creepiest zombies we have yeah. in the short and. You know, we watch the footage over, all over the time, you know, as we continue to put it together and edit it. And she's freaky looking to watch. Freaky, wow, man. Nice. She's got these deep set eyes, you know, and and looks like she's been decomposed for a little while. Right. But <laughs> what, what I really like about the way that you guys shoot is you have a definite vision of what you want to, to be portrayed on the screen. Mm-hmm. Um, whenever you asked her to get down on the ground and crawl towards you, there was about three or four different ways that she was trying to lay down. And then mm-hmm. you both... You both were in sync, and you said, no, 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 you need to be on your side, and you need to reach forward with your left arm. And so you guys are on the same page as how you want it to look on screen. Well, right. I think yeah. that's pretty important. You, you've been doing it long enough together. You kind of know what works and what you like at this point. You know, we've, yeah. this is, we've been doing movies for probably three years, a lot of shorts and stuff. So, right. yeah, it pretty much is. <laughs> yeah. What kind of reception kind do you guys get it? at cons when you go? We get a uh, really good reception. As a matter of fact, um, we were we had a, a short screening in Walker Stalker in Dallas uh, last year, and you know we weren't sure how many people we'd have because just before us was one of the guys that was in Walking Dead. It was Axel, the guy with the big oh, mustache. Really? Oh, really? Yeah, 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 cool. And cool. so, you know, he only had a handful of people, and they weren't very energetic. <laughs> yeah. And so we're like, well, we don't know how this is going to be, but let's go, you know. Yeah. And within minutes, it was standing room only. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had well over 150 people in just our part. Now, keep in mind, at the same time, you had half the cast from among or from uh, The Walking, Walking Dead, Dead yeah. in the rest of the the. Uh, Coliseum or the, mm-hmm. the rest of the conference convention. And our boy Zach Galligan was there. Yeah, and Zach Galligan <laughs> was there. And I mean, there were tons of other people there, but we were standing room only and <coughs> they loved it. You yeah. know, at the end, we at, did a little questions and a- answer section. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we had audience members telling us, hey, this is better than World War Z. You know, just keep going because we want to see it. Right. And so here we are. We're still right. working on it. The talent's there. The talent's there. And I think you should get the talent out even more. And, you know, like later on, you guys, if you haven't talked yet, you know, he's doing Texas Terror Challenge 2. You've got the skill. Yep. You might be able to mix some stuff up and get some, some more zombies out on the field out there. But um, there's so, m- so many things that go into making a film like this. Mm-hmm. And, and I wanted to ask a little bit of background from both you guys. Sure. What influenced <coughs> you to make a, a film, one, that's, that, that is so gory because it's horrifying. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and two, do you have any any uh, any ties to what the the movie tells uh, of of a government takeover? You know, the possibility of that actually happening. How do you guys feel about that? Man, watch the movies, man. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's all happening. it's all there right in front of your <laughs> eyes. So, I mean, that's terrifying enough. You want to be scared? Just watch your local cable news. Trump and Gingrich. Well, and I'm actually the other side scares me even worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have actually a, a pretty good sized military involvement in the script, and yeah. I'm retired military, so I'm making sure that everything that takes place is as though it would would it really happen in real life. Wow! And so, you know, you came out when we did the horde scene last year with the Humvee and and you know yes. the small National Guard team, right. and everything that we're doing is, is <coughs> spot on, exactly the way it would be done if a zombie outbreak were to actually happen. FEMA is a big part in the story, and they're not. The rescue teams are 
or the place you go to actually be safe. There's right. no such thing as a safe zone in this world. Yeah. So, say it's not so. Yeah. <laughs> got to be some yeah. safe zone. No, I want, yeah. I want somebody to say, see, because the scenario comes to, to us all the time on the show of what would really actually happen. Would people literally, because in, in all the zombie movies, um, human beings are portrayed as being dirty little rats, and it seems to be the first sighting of a zombie we just pick up a garbage can and dump it on the street you know screw it it's over you know but i think that we'd be more resilient than that i think it's a little bit of both though you know especially if you look around you know here we are in austin great city but really half the population i don't think would make it no you know um especially wow, with half you know I I do I don't, half. Yeah. that means half would become zombies uh, immediately well, they would die i mean or think about this how many people really know you got to boil water before you drink it it wouldn't be the zombies that would kill them. They'd be dying from disease, right. hypothermia. Right. Things, yeah. You know, thing they wouldn't be able to survive. Not you know, having their iPhones. Not knowing right. how to live. So I mean, yeah. I mean, you see it all over town. We've got guys that look like lumberjacks, but they couldn't change a tire. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> I know. What's and with so, that? What, what would so they do true. in an apocalypse? You know? Yeah. So, um, you know, we we keep it really close to to what we think the reality would be. You know, um, and so there are a lot of people that are gonna die right away because. There are people that trust the government, right. and they'd actually become victims. And then there are people that would trust nobody, and then there are people that just give up. Yeah. Right. And then there's a lot of people that have, kind of like I just mentioned with you know, the inability to change a tire, there are a lot of people that would have no idea what to do. And yeah. so they'd immediately fall prey and become victims. To That's kind of what the, the essence of the short is. It's basically you know, part of the script where our character Scarlet is almost the verge of giving up. You know, she don't even know why she's even trying to stay alive in this world. You know, yeah, she's like, why? You know, what's the point? There's and a little piece yeah. on YouTube that you can watch, <laughs> and it seems like I don't want to say that you're bossing her around, but it seems like she does need that extra sense of yeah. um, leadership, direction. Yeah. yeah, to get her going. It's, um, it's mostly because in that scene, and, and we don't get to see it yet as to what happens before yeah, we've that already filmed scene. so yeah once you see what happens before that It'll you'll understand sense. everything as why that's not right. happening. okay because in the scene that we've currently got online it's immediately after she had to uh, bury her father and actually she had to kill him because he got bit okay and so her not mind really. isn't there you know she's not she's not thinking about herself not thinking about her safety not thinking about you know max's safety who is the, the main actor who is mm -hmm. actually william you know and so awesome you know, screen all, name <laughs> max max bronson max I, bronson. Nice. <laughs> I got charles yeah. bronson who's one of my favorite badasses and then you know mad max from mad the max dude so, yeah you know, that is dope dude yeah, yeah. Uh, actually a lot of our character names are nods to yeah. to action uh, yeah people that you grew up with yep. one of the main military guys is kyle hicks which Kyle is a Hicks. direct nod to Michael Biehn's two characters of yep. Kyle Reese from Terminator. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And and Dwayne Hicks from Aliens. So oh, dude, you know, that's awesome. I dude. wanted Michael Biehn to play that character. So in, yeah. when I wrote it, I in my in my mind it was Michael Biehn. Right, right. So y'all have yeah. excellent people playing <laughs> the characters in the movies. Very believable. That's the thing. The difference that I saw between this. I mean, I haven't seen the movie, but the sh the, the little pieces that you have shown me and actually going out. Um, the chick that slam like crushed my head in. What was her name? It was Haley. It was Haley. Haley. She's like really good. Yeah. Have you seen the bruises online? Yeah. <laughs> like, still got them. Still got them. It's just now going away. <laughs> now now yep. this this is okay. This is from the rock that was that, when that you grabbed her right? arm <laughs> and it dropped in my arm, dude. It was it was so big. But my point is, the characters are so believable. It makes you want to, to see what happens. You immediately are involved with them intimately to find out what their life is like. Thank you. I'm glad that, it, that that's come across that way because it was really important for me. I I never wanted to get involved in the zombie genre because it became a joke, you know, for a while. Damn. And it really did. It, it, it's true. I, I have a hard time watching zombie films on Netflix. I'm not going to lie, man. They're so bad I can't watch them. Yeah. So when my brother died, um, you know, and I went through that whole – you know, not wanting to deal with it. My third brother in three years had died, mm -hmm. and it was just like, "What the hell's what going the hell? on, man? Why does why does this keep happening to me?" You know, yeah. and, and just just like I'm not gonna deal with it. So, I'm gonna finish writing this. I had an idea um, 
about making a, a, a Walking Dead tribute, right. like a, a fan film for YouTube. That's all yeah. I wanted to do, right. to see how right. it would work. And then when he died, I just like, you know what, I just started writing, and boom, there was the outline that was 10 pages long. And then you know I was just able to, to use that outline and really say, okay, I'm going to move forward with this. Yeah. This is pretty good. And it is pretty good. Then, Didn't you stay up for like two days or something? Oh, yeah, or? yeah. I spent weeks pretty much work you know but it took me about two days to do the outline but you know right. i've been i'm still writing on the script two years later yeah you know like little ideas come here and there mm -hmm. and before we you know before we actually go into production i'll probably be writing all the way up until that point and we'll be making changes right while we're shooting that's right. just what happens with writing are but, you unable to be pleased with your own work oh, i never like my stuff man I was thinking, <laughs> you dude know, have you I, seen john <laughs> yeah okay I, I, and i hate it so he wrote this movie called john and i have it at home I have two copies at home and uh and i, I love it dude because it's, uh, again the characters are believable were you involved with john at the tail end i came in yeah, he helped okay. with uh with the to, to be distribution i mean he's a, I uh, mean, executive producer dark and twisted man and that's uh, that's what draws people in you yeah. know and, and how how detail oriented both y'all's minds are towards it like the makeup and stuff like that actually we have some pictures uh, that, that I wanted uh, Gavin Stone to put on the screen for us. We're going to talk about some pictures. This is whenever I was I was filming with William Instone at, at some Pflugerville Park, straight up gorilla style. Gavin, yeah. you got those photos? Let's check one of them out, which I can't see. Oh, yeah. Oh, there he is. So this is, yeah. this is William <laughs> Instone putting makeup on my face, and it's like a some kind of prosthetic it's a prosthetic piece yeah you know and uh we just boot it down and lay tax and paint i'm not even a makeup artist i mean but that's it looks real, you know it's like crap right there you know <laughs> what i was thinking about though whenever you're putting this stuff on me is i don't want to breathe too loud to be annoying that's that, you know i hope my breath doesn't stink you know and just stupid stuff and and you put this god-awful shirt on me yeah. that had this rancid smell <laughs> And then I find out you can buy those shirts online. People actually sell that. That's stuff. what yeah. uh, we plan on doing after we wrap um, um, Among the Dead. We're going to sell a lot of these because I have just so many outfits of shirts and stuff out there. That, yeah. And uh, pants and zombie clothes. So, you know, people want to have their zombie, you know, complete. They need the outfit. People neglect the outfits. Right. Yeah. And I learned how to make this stuff by, uh, you know, working with a professional costumer. Wow, dark, dark, really? uh, dark, dark creations. creations Austin. Okay, and his name's uh, Adam Lane, and he basically gave me his. Um, Did you tell me about Adam Lane? Yeah. No. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. He gave me he gave me his um, recipe on how to make the clothes. He didn't give it to too many people, but he gave it to me because he was too busy to make Can it. Can I guess? And then you could just nod. Nah, nope, you, nope, nope, <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Sworn to secrecy. I mean, it, it looks it's like I learned how to do uh, makeup. Um, oh yeah, how to cover yeah. A, Tattoo with my uh, first makeup arti artist, uh, Roxy. Yeah, and that was I swore to secrecy cool. not to show anybody how to do it. So yeah. no one gets to know how to do that because that's just one of those things. Um, I've just picked up the stuff, you know, out of necessity. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, I'm a filmmaker out of necessity because I started off as an actor and I got, you know, I was getting little gigs here and there, but I couldn't get anything that I liked. So I was like, you know, screw it, I'll make my own movies. And yeah, and so then I started making my own movies and putting myself in them, and yeah. that's just how yeah. it's going to be. You know, yeah. I actually have an agent now, though, so <laughs> no, I'm a legitimate no. actor now. <laughs> that's, actually pretty cool. that's actually pretty cool, man. <laughs> well, these seems like huge undertakings, just being a filmmaker and all that kind of stuff. I mean, what drives, what gets you into that? Because I mean, it seems like there's a lot to it. It takes up all your time. A lot of time, a lot of money. Uh, it's uh, not a cheap hobby, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> no. um, <laughs> you know, it's it's just kind of a drive for me. I've been involved with film since I was 14. Um, you know, I would go to conventions in L.A. and I was a movie theater assistant manager when I was 14. Oh, and, wow. uh, you know, it's just I, I lived and breathed film. And then I went into the military. And the whole time I was in the military, I put everything on, on hold. And then as soon as I came to the end of, of my career at the military, it's time to move on, and I immediately got back into film. Uh, I was a musical theater major for a while, but uh, again, before I went in the military. And when I got out, I was like, you know what? That's not a career path. <laughs> However, I can do visual storytelling through film, mm -hmm. and you know, it just it's something you can do in your spare time. Whereas like theater, you have to be dedicated, you know, four or five nights a week, eight days, eight weeks straight, you know. Whereas with film, at least at our level, at the indie level. We could do this weekend, and okay, you're available three weeks from now. We'll do a day on that weekend. Which is how we're doing it, right? Which yeah. is how we're doing it. Which is why it's taking so long, you know, because 
everybody, you know, until we can afford to pay people properly, you know, we're slaves to everybody's schedule. Mm -hmm. Save and pay. Exactly. Save and pay. Mm -hmm. Save and pay. That's basically exactly. what it's been. I mean, we, you know, we had a DP for a while, a great DP, but we can't afford to pay him anymore. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, he's fantastic, but we're having to shoot it ourselves now. Yeah. You know, we had to buy our own cameras because we just, it was cheaper than paying someone yeah. to but be able to do it whenever we could do it. How many yeah. times do you hear, though, some of the best <laughs> indie movies out there are this exact thing? Because... Mm -hmm. You get somebody who gets paid to do a job, and it's just that. It's a job. Mm, right. It's a passion yeah. for y'all. And it gives you an avenue to bring that passion out yeah. and show other people what it's about. Yeah, absolutely. That's true. Yeah. Quick rundown. I know that you've kind of mentioned what the true meaning of the story is. Is there a hidden meaning or a hidden agenda behind the storyline? Um, people find out that the, the government kind of – they're wondering if the government has something to do with creating – Something we tell you that right in the beginning. Yeah, we tell you right away. <laughs> you know the government made it. Yep, it's, okay. a, it's a population control experiment that went okay. wrong. Yeah. You know, the government went ahead and approved it. We went for it. It was for people who got the a fake pandemic yes. that they created. Yeah. And there was a contaminated uh, vaccine. Mm -hmm. So everyone who got the vaccine, boom, turned yeah. into a zombie yeah. within 48 hours. Wow. And basically we start off in the CDC and they're like, we can't control it. Right. Yeah, and I that, like how you veered off what Romero says, and I'm a Romero fan. I'm not saying he's wrong or anything. I'm just saying I like how you mix up running zombies and yeah. walking zombies. You know, because that's how I think yeah. that it would be. To me, the runners are the most terrifying creature because they never get tired. Mm -hmm. They'll run after you. A fat guy like me that can't run very far or very long. <laughs> you know, yeah, but you that is horrible. After me, it'd be but, horrible, dude. Yeah, so I have to fight them and beat them up. So, so luckily. Yeah, I can do that. But I, I do like, I wanted runners and I wanted walkers because I do, you know, want to give my homage to right. the king. You know, yes. Romero's the man and, uh, you know, he always will be. Mm -hmm. No one will ever do it better than him. Right. You know, because he's the guy who created it. Right. Now, technically, Nicotero is the best. No one's beaten Nicotero. Right. <laughs> the Walking Dead is the open. Nicotero no one's, is no on one's fire. Yeah. So he's on fire. The thing is, you don't try to to do better than the yeah. walking dead yeah. or trying to copy the walking dead right. like some people who storylines were exactly <laughs> for a season right. of the walking yeah. dead right. and we're going to do this that. whole thing here and right. we're going to make it this guy's going for his family no, no, no okay no. we don't do anything like that so yeah we wanted to make it a little bit different and try to you know put our own little twist on it as much as you can do right. there's you know people say zombies are worn out or zombies aren't original well hell nothing's original right. anymore right. every cool guitar riff ever written was <laughs> written by Tony Dead. Naomi yeah. right. you know did it so all they the already did man. it so every Zed Zeppelin and, and, and Black Sabbath wrote every cool rock song that ever, yeah. ever going to be written has yeah. been written by them already right. Right. so you just put your own twist on it you know yeah. it's that's the same cool. thing with the zombie genre is we just got to put our own twist right. on it and that's what I hope we're able to do where, yeah. where can people find more Among the Dead online? The easiest place to find it is on Facebook. It's uh, facebook.com backslash among the dead movie. All one word, among the dead movie. Uh, when we change the title to the feature film later, the website will continue to follow with the new name as well. Okay. So if you follow us now, when we change everything, <laughs> you'll still be following us then as well. Okay, cool. And uh, we'll be at HeroCon. Um, it's going to be here. It's a small little con in okay. Austin for it's like Comic Con. I'm going to make an appearance there, and you know, but we will be having a table at MonsterCon in San Antonio. Oh, um, I it's, love a it's a free con, dude. free um, con in San Antonio in September. Uh, we'll be there. Uh, we we've already been given the table. They love us there because we bring zombies, and that yep. brings a lot of people. Yes, it does. Um, there's going to be the cast from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and the Krishna Zombie from Dawn of the Dead is going to be there. So that's yeah. going to be awesome. That's in November, right? Uh, I believe it's September. End of September. September? Oh, okay. And then in October we'll be at uh, Horrific Film Festival in San Antonio. Okay. As well, which I am hoping to be able to premiere the okay. short for Among the Dead at Horrific. That's kind of the plan. Are y'all okay. planning to be at ZombieCon? Um, I do not know if we'll be able to make that because I think that is also in October and Alamo City Comic Con is in October as well. So October's pretty back. Yes it is. Plus you got your thing in October. Yeah. So, I got two things. I, so I, we're gonna I'm try going to make to it out to your Texas FEMA camp. That. You know? Yeah, that's gonna be awesome. So. Look, we have two minutes. Uh, I don't even know if we have time for hot seat questions, but I, I wanna ask you guys what what do you think uh, the ultimate weapon is in the end with zombies if they're chasing you? Besides your mind, I think you've got to have something 
you know, a good handheld weapon because it's never, so it's yeah, it's never going to run out of ammo. Yeah. Okay. You know, but it's got to be got to be something good, and you got to be able to wield it. You know. Yeah. Having a katana doesn't do you any good if you don't know how to use yeah. it. Yeah. So. It's the skill set, under knowing how to survive. You know, it, it, every single person should have that ability, regardless if zombies are real or not. You know how to boil water. Know how to not die of hypothermia. Know how to hunt. Know how yeah. to skin an animal. Yeah. Know how to not bust their guts into them and contaminate the meat. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's little things about thing about growing up a redneck is that you learn a lot of stuff, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. A small town Texas, baby. We're gonna live down here. Damn man, right. I can't wait to have you guys come back. Uh, thank you for the for the short time that we're here. You guys uh, Thanks, from the morning to dead. Yeah, yeah, awesome. You're always welcome. Everybody from Zombie Life TV, uh, we just love you guys and, and we hope the boat the best for you guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you guys. Much. All right, that's it. As always, kill them all. Woo! Kill them all! Mm -hmm. Thank you.